Greetings, everyone. This is Mike Ashby in Cambridge with the second of our recorded PowerPoint lecture unit about material selection and the uh, CES EduPack software. This one is about visualizing data. The intended outcomes are listed here uh, to develop an understanding of material families, by that I mean metals, ceramics, polymers and so forth, and the relationships between their properties. The skills involved include an ability to make these charts for specific purposes, the values and attitudes that we can hope to distill from it are a, a grasp of the broader view of materials, the big picture, so to speak, where the materials fit in to the bigger picture. The listings at the bottom of this page give some uh, other resources where you can learn more about the content of this unit, but uh, it's they're not necessary for it. They're just further information if you want it. They, PowerPoint units are all designed to be usable not just with the texts, the first two texts there, but with the standard materials text by Callister and Budinsky and Askland and Shackelford and others. The software itself you can locate by going to grantadesign.com here. So let's get started. Uh, here, here's an outline exploring relationships by means of these charts that you see on the left here, making the charts themselves, adding your own materials so that they too appear on the charts, and finally report writing. Now here's the background. That is a bit part of a data sheet uh, for a material, and our databases, the EduPack databases, depending which one, have between 100 and 4,000 records that look a bit like that. Well, it's possible to get information from one material from these records, and it's possible to compare two or three of them by doing it by hand. But supposing you want to look at the whole lot, then the best way to do that is to make property charts. From these, we can distill some meaning. There's a lot of information contained in these charts, as we'll see. Here's the idea. This is the simplest of all possible visualizations of material data. It's a bar chart showing Young's modulus for metals, polymers, ceramics, and hybrids, by which I mean composites and foams and materials like fiberboard. The range of the scales here is very wide. Uh, that's because a, a property like Young's modulus spans about six decades factor of a million between the smallest and the largest. For that reason, most of these charts, not all of them, but most of them use logarithmic scales because that's the only way you can get a factor of a million onto one axis like that. This is what a real chart looks like made with the software. Same headings, metals, polymers, ceramics, and hybrids. Young's modulus once more, same range as the previous one. And as soon as you've plotted this, you can begin to extract some information. Metals lie here, and the median value for metals is up here at about 100 GPA. Polymers are down here, a factor of about 30. Their, their median, median lies about here, and that's a factor of about 30 below those of metals. Here's the equivalent information for elastomers, rubber. It is down by another factor of 200 from where we were before. So these different classes of material have quite distinct ranges of material properties which characterize them. It's possible to use a chart like this for selection, which is a topic we'll get to in another unit. Uh, but uh, here's a very simple example. Supposing we simply want materials with high Young's modulus then the ability to put a box onto one of these charts, which isolates the ones at the top, immediately lists the materials with high Young's modulus. Similarly, you could ask for materials with low modulus, and that would simply mean putting a box on the bottom like that. So that allows selection without using any numbers at all. It's just using extremes of the data ranges that we have available. Now here's a different sort of chart. In this case, two properties are plotted. In this instance, Young's modulus and density. 
Both properties span a considerable range, so once again the scales are logarithmic. And the obvious thing about it, we'll see a real one in a moment, is that the families, the different families of materials, occupy discrete areas of this picture. So metals, it turns out, are all up here with moduli between 10 and about 800 GPA. Ceramics, most of them, the technical ceramics, are up here. Polymers are down here. Elastomers are down here. Foams over here. This is what a real chart looks like, made with the software. Here, as I pointed out a minute ago, are metals, the red lozenge. Here is the lightest of materials we normally think of as structural metals. Here's magnesium. Here's the heaviest, tungsten. Steels are in here, nickel, copper, titanium, zinc alloys, and so on. They all lie within that red envelope. Polymers are down here, polypropylene, polyethylene down here. In the completely separate and discrete area of this picture, elastomers, as we saw before, are down there, neoprene, silicones. Here are composites, CFRP and GFRP. They lie on a trajectory between the polymer, which is the matrix of these composites, and the fibers, which are ceramics. They're up here somewhere. Um, and uh, not surprisingly, the composite bubble here lies on a trajectory between those two extremes. Well, how do you make charts like that? You can make a chart like that for any combination of properties you like. If the property is in the database, then you can plot it either as a bar chart or in combination with another property as a bubble chart. And to do that, we have to use the third of these three buttons at the top that I introduced in unit one, the first recorded unit of this sort. And here they are, browse, search, and select. Well, in the last unit, we looked at browsing and searching, but we didn't use this one. This time I'm going to click on chart select. The first thing you then have to do is to decide what part of a database or what database you want to select from. And that's what this pull down menu here does. So if I click on that with the simplest of our databases, the standard edu level two database, the options are to select from the bare database, select from the database with additional eco properties or properties for corrosion resistance, or to define your own subset. Just select the subset of materials you want to select from. We'll return to define your own subset in a minute, but for the moment I'm going to take the default option, which is that one, EDU Level 2. When you do that, the system offers you this menu here with three additional buttons, one of which says Chart. These are the plotting and selection tools in the CES software, and the one we're going to use is the one called Chart. So let's do that. Here we are with Chart. If I click on Chart, the system gives you the option of choosing what property you want to plot. So if you want a bar chart, you select the y-axis, and select a property from the pull-down menu here, which lists all the properties in the database, and the system will then make a bar chart of that property. If you want to make the other kind of chart, the bubble chart, you first select the y-axis, then the x-axis, and for each, you select a property from this pull-down menu here, and the system then creates the, the chart. You can do more than that it's possible to make functions of properties. And to do that, you go through the same sequence that we just have, but you now select this additional option, which is on the pull-down menu, Advanced. Advanced allows you to make functions of properties. So supposing I wanted to plot modulus divided by density, that's specific modulus. If I click on modulus over here, divided by density. The system will now plot a bar chart of modulus divided by density. And had I put on the x-axis yield strength divided by density, I'd get a bubble chart of those two properties. That turns out to be a very useful thing to be able to do for rather more advanced things than we're doing today. And it's one we'll return to in later units. Now, whenever you make a chart, you find across the top a series of chart management tools, and they look a bit mysterious at first. So this particular frame is designed simply as a lookup 
table of what these various options are, and I'll just go through them. This one lets you put a line on the chart, and we'll do that in a moment. This one lets you put a box on the chart. This one allows you to remove both of those. This is a zoom facility. It allows you to zoom into any part of the chart that you want to enlarge. This zooms back out again. This is a, an option for automatically scaling the axes so that they include all the data that is accessible in the database. This is an annotation tool which allows you to put text onto the chart. And in fact, that text there, Young's Modulus Dash Density, was put on using this option here. This, is, this allows you to draw a curve onto the chart. We'll look at these again in a minute. This creates the envelopes, these bubbles here. The big bubbles surrounding the metal data, for instance, are inserted simply by clicking on that button. Uh, this allows you to, it's a part of the selection tool system, it allows you to remove from the picture any materials that have failed any part of the selection procedure. This allows you to hide them all together. Well, I mentioned annotation, and there are a number of annotation tools that we've just touched on, and I'll just show you what they do. The T is the text annotation tool. It adds text to the chart. These two here allow either selection or just putting, for demonstration purposes, a line or a box onto the chart. To do that, you have to select Show Line for Display Only, and it then allows you to put a line anywhere you like with any slope you like, and this allows you to put a box on the chart and move it around to any position that you want. This tool over here is the curve tool. If you right-click on the, if draw a curve and then right-click on it, you can then change its color and its format. You can go to a different kind of a line and you can change the color of the line, all of which allows you to customize the picture rather more. And here's what they look like. Here are a set of lines on here, which have been put on with the line tool. There's something put on with the text tool. There is a box put on with the box tool. There's a line put on with the line tool. And finally, there's a curve put on with the curve tool. All of these allow you then to customize the pictures and all of the typefaces, as we'll see in a minute, can be changed for color and for size. Everything is customizable. Now, custom subsets. Sometimes you don't want all the materials in the database. You only want some of them. You might, for instance, wish to limit the exercise, the job you're doing, to just metals and polymers. Well, the way to do that is to go to Chart Select over here. Define your own subset. A minute ago we chose level 2. Now we're going to take define your own subset. It then tells you what database you have available. We had edu level 2, the materials data table. And from within that you can now remove, you can unclick all the families and then click back into the ones that you want. Metals and polymers for instance. If you do that, the only materials you'll see from that point on are the metals and the polymers, and these will have disappeared. It's particularly useful when dealing with our higher level databases, some of which have thousands of materials in them. At much of the time, you really don't want all of them there all the time. Now, changing the chart settings. The system is extremely flexible. It lets you adjust almost everything, including the units and the currency and, among other things, the fonts for the charts, the title font and the subtitle font and the tick font. That's the fonts of the, of the scales at the edges. You can adapt also the labels. You saw that the material bubbles were labeled with the name of the material. You can change the text size, you can change the text color for the labels. Uh, here you can change the units from uh, imperial units to SI units, for instance. Uh, you can limit the number of decimal places that the numbers are shown. You can reduce the data from a range to a point value by replacing the ranges of material properties by their average, by their mean. All of that comes under settings here. 
you can add your own data and that's a particularly useful thing if you want to demonstrate something about the research that you're doing or to highlight a material that is the subject of an investigation of some sort. To do that you click on add a record and the system now gives you a blank record, a record with no data in it but with all the headings and with boxes to put the range of the property. So supposing we called it my material and we added data for Young's modulus and strength and thermal conductivity, then any plot that you made involving those properties would now include an additional little material bubble for my material. You can insert as many as 10 new materials, which gives you considerable flexibility in exploring how materials fit into the big picture. Now, saving projects, once you've done all that, what you would like to do, perhaps, is to write a report. First of all, it's quite a lot of work involved in making those charts. You might like to save them. That's done in the way you might expect. You go to File, Save Project, give it a name and a place to, for the system to put it, and the project will be there when you next open the software, and you can reload it, and you'll go back to exactly the point you were at when you saved it. The second thing you can do is to copy and paste either a record or a chart. If you've made a chart, you might like to record that. You might like to also store information about one or more of the materials. You simply right-click on the chart and select Copy. And that copies the chart or the record to a clipboard. And you can then paste it straight into Word. So this has now become a Word document that you can edit, you can take in material out, you can move the pictures around and all, all that sort of thing. And there's a chart that was made with the software but has now been cut and pasted into Word. There is one tip about this cut and pasting, which is that the best way to paste into Word when dealing with these records and these charts is to use the option Paste Special and select Device Independent Bitmap. If you simply say paste, it pastes the information in as a picture file. Uh, the resolution is better and there's more flexibility if you store it as a device independent bitmap. Well, that is the content of the, today's unit. Uh, and I'll just now summarize the main points here. Material property charts give meaning, as you might say, to data. You can it's a way of surveying large quantities of data and looking for trends and correlations and generally mining the data for further information. The texts that were listed on the second frame of this presentation have got a lot of charts in them and the publishers allow you to copy these for teaching purposes. If you want to use them in your teaching you can copy them and hand them out in the class. More interesting for students is to make the charts themselves, and the CES EduPack is very flexible in that way. It takes only a few minutes to make one of these charts, and once you've got it, you can explore it, you can add other data, you can annotate it, and so forth. There are project files, that's to say a saved project, for many charts, and they can be downloaded from the Granter website. Any of the databases that GrantHead provides can be visualized in this way. The system adapts itself to the database that you have running at that time. And as we've mentioned, you can add your own records. And finally, there are comprehensive report writing facilities that I've mentioned a minute ago, which allow you to then present the results of what you've done to others. These are the 25 PowerPoint units, and we today have looked at number two. At some future time, we plan to record most of the rest of them, so they will become available. Good, I will stop at that point. Thank you very much.